How you doing guys? This is Anthony here from DIY Auto Tech. We've got the Ruger Single 6 on the bench here. We're going to be doing an uh, <coughs> action job on this gun today. We're going to be replacing the trigger spring, um, trigger return spring, so that uh, when we pull the trigger, it's much lighter, drops the hammer much easier. We're going to keep the hammer spring stock um, to make sure reliability is good and that accurate Accuracy so I'm going to show you how to take this gun apart. We're going to be using the Ruger manual So you know what I'm saying is going to be true and uh, we'll take this apart. We'll show you how to do the uh, The spring and we'll set it in there. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's get started All right, like I said, we're going to be using the manual for the Ruger model single six um, We're going to be using the disassembly instructions to disassemble for cleaning and it shows you it tells you step by step all the reassembly as well so I'm gonna go off the manual I've done about 10 of these guns before I know how they work <clears throat> but I'm gonna use the manual here uh, just so if you guys don't have one you can follow my directions to the T and you can get this job done easily it's pretty easy to do um, just so let, let's get started first thing that it says in the manual here of course is uh, you know point the gun in a safe direction Make sure that the cylinder chambers are unloaded. So let's go ahead and do that. This gun is unloaded. And uh, see for step two, press in fully on the left side of the base pin latch while holding it in that position, withdraw the base pin, remove the cylinder and close the gate. This is as far as you need to go for routine cleaning, but uh, since we're not just cleaning the gun. All right, let me get some light in here. Got plenty of light. So we're gonna press in this base pin latch here and we're gonna remove the base pin from the firearm. You can set that aside somewhere. Next thing we're gonna open the uh, loading gate like so. We're gonna push the cylinder out, grab it, set it aside as well and now we can close the loading gate as well and we'll move on to the next step. Alright next step you guys is gonna be to remove the grip panel screws. Um, pretty much the only tools you'll need in this is going to be a flathead screwdriver. Um, that's what I've learned after doing all these. And uh, you also need a nail of some sort, a small nail, uh, just to hold the, uh, the hammer spring in place. So uh, we got one grip frame screw here that we're going to remove. Try your best not to mar up all these screws too. It looks better when <laughs> it doesn't look like you've taken your gun apart ten times screw just comes out like so, we'll set that aside and then you can just kinda of pry on the grip panel you know you can try and get it off that way what I like to do is take the screw and leave it inside and hold it a little sideways and pull the grip panel up that way so effectively what I'm doing is putting the screw in pushing it sideways and it helps the threads catch and pull the grip frame up this way you don't uh, tear the grip frame up and then there's going to be a uh, little pin in here, that kind of, a little dowel that centers the screw. And then you could just push out the grip frame. The other one, just push it out and it falls off. Set that aside. So now we have the, uh, the frame of the revolver exposed. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. Draw the hammer rearward to a full cock position and ensure a short length, about one inch, of nail or pin into the small hole at the lower end of the hammer strut. The purpose of the pin is to confine the mainspring when the hammer is released. So what we're doing here, and you'll see when I cock the hammer back all the way, when I cock the hammer back, see that little hole there? That's where we're going to put the nail into. So let's go ahead and grab us a nice little trusty, nail. nasty little nail here. We're going to go ahead and slide that into the hole there. Push it about halfway through so it's aligned on both sides. And then we're going to release the trigger in the downward position and push the hammer forward. Let's click it into place. So now the mainspring is resting on that nail and you can move it around. It still can't come out of the gun, <clears throat> but this is one of the steps we need to perform. We're going to have to remove the whole grip frame to actually get the spring out. 
All right, the next step in the book is to remove the five uh, screws which fasten the grip frame to the cylinder frame of the revolver. So we have five screws here. I'll show them where they're at. Or I'll show you where they're at. We've got one up front. You got two right here. And then we got two at the back. Two right there. I believe two of them are of different sizes. So we're going to want to make sure uh, to put them where they come. So uh, what I like to do is I like to hold the gun a certain way. So I'll start from back here. And when I take this right side grip screw out, I'll leave it on the right side of the table. When I take the left side out, I'll leave it on the left side of the table. Um, and the ones furthest back, I'll put at the furthest back point. Um, this just ensures that that when you put the screws back in, they're in the right spot. And when I when I took this gun apart the first time, um, what I noticed was Ruger had installed two of the screws backwards, uh, but they had also installed the dowel pin backwards, so it didn't really matter. But it's just the concept of knowing that they put it in incorrectly, so um, it's not a big deal, but. All I'm doing is loosening up all the screws. I'm not taking them out yet. I'm just going to loosen them all up a little bit. This way I don't put too much pressure on any one bolt or any one of the screws. So as you can see now, the frame can wiggle around a little bit. So I've loosened it all up. And now I'm just going to take all the screws out and put them in their appropriate uh, positions. So I've got the back right screw here I'll start with. And I'll set that down at the back right, back left, and then I'll tilt the gun straight up like this, and I'll do the bottom right, and one of these at the bottom is going to be much longer because it's going to protrude into like this little dowel, <coughs> which I'll show you later. Hopefully I can show you, I'm not sure if I can actually remove it. Yeah, see, this screw is a little bit longer. And this is on the side of the loading gate. This is how it shows it in the manual. It'll show you the longer screw goes here. But when I originally got the gun, that screw was on the left side, and the dowel was uh, positioned incorrectly. So I don't blame Ruger. They're really far behind on uh, manufacturing, but it's okay. Moving all five of those grip frame screws. We're on the fourth one now. And this is the bottoms, uh, bottom left one, so we're going to put on the bottom left. And the last screw that we have left is this one right here. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and remove that screw as well. And once we remove this screw, we'll be able to pull apart the uh, assembly. So that's the front center screw. And what I'm gonna show, I'm just gonna show you guys how I have these all positioned. As you can see, there's my right front, or right back, left back, right center left center and front screw. Now that they're all like this, I can go ahead and start pulling this uh, this assembly apart. I'm just going to wiggle it out. And it should be fairly simple. Um, the only thing that will catch is the trigger, uh, trigger, the trigger return spring. So now that uh, um, we've done that, I, I should have probably told you what it said in the book. It says to pull the grip frame rearward and downward to separate it from the cylinder frame. And then it says if the, uh, if the grip frame does not readily separate, you can draw the hammer back slightly. Um, so now the next thing that we're allowed to do in the book, it says to uh, remove the mainspring assembly from the grip frame. So we have the mainspring assembly, and we're just going to push it out through the bottom. It comes out, and we're leaving that nail in so that the mainspring does not go shooting off. And I've had that happen before, and it is insanely hard to put back on. So uh, you really don't want to mess with that. It's kind of a nightmare. We'll set that aside. So we've got the grip frame here. Take into account that we do have a small plunger right here. So we're going to take that out and leave it aside. 
and we still ha we have the trigger return spring in here. This is the part we're going to be replacing, which is in there. We'll show you how to do that. Um, on this part of the gun, everything is where it should be. We also have a small plunger back here that goes in opposite. The dowel end goes inside the gun, um, so keep that in mind. So we'll pull that plunger out and we'll set that aside as well. All right, so what it's telling us to do in layman's terms is to pull, uh, let's get my screwdriver so I can show you, is to pull these little arms off of the dowel on each side of the gun. So it's saying pull those arms off of the dowel. And then once you do that, we need to punch out this little retaining, uh, this little retainer right here. And it's actually really easy, it just pushes out. So uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna lift off those arms. It'll take you a couple tries. There's one off. Let's try and get the second one off. Alright, the second one is off now. As you can see, the trigger spring is merely held into place now with that drift, with that little uh, pin. So we're just going to push that out. Um, Alright, I have a toothpick up here, which I'm going to use to drift that out. As you see, it pushed right out. So that little drift punch, it's not really punched in there. We'll set that aside. Um, now we can pull this out and we can pull the trigger spring out as well. So this is the stock Ruger spring. It is pretty heavy. I would assume that it's up there in the 60 to 70 ounce range. Probably more. Um, so it's really heavy. You can see it's built pretty thick. Heavy gauge steel. <coughs> um, Let's get the 40 ounce spring out, or actually let's compare it to the 30 ounce. So you can see quality is pretty nice. This is the 30 ounce, this is the Ruger. So just a little different metal quality. Now that we got the trigger spring out, it's uh, well, it's time to put the new one and in. We're just going to set the spring up inside the uh, cylinder frame. Set it inside, like so. You gotta kinda squeeze the legs together to get the spring pushed in there. We'll kinda line it up with the hole. And then I just like to take uh, like a toothpick or something and just to line up the dowel. So now I can pull that out, take my pen, and uh, I'll, I'll, I like to lightly oil it. Pin is through. Um, I'm going to leave the legs off for now so that when we uh, go to put this inside the revolver, we can actually get everything set up pretty nicely. All right, so now it's just the dowel is the only thing that's holding the spring in place. Now what Ruger says here in the reassembly is we need to unhook the ends of the trigger spring, which we just did from the grooved retaining pins on both sides. Those are the dowels that we were talking about. And then it says insert the cylinder latch spring and plunger in the hole in the grip frame. Okay, so we have the cylinder latch spring, which is the smaller one uh, that we remember into the grip frame. So we put it inside the grip frame like so. As you can see, we're putting it in the grip frame. There's a hole for it. Insert the, so we just did that. Insert the latch spring and plunger in the hole in the grip frame. And it says the spring goes in first so that the plunger is on top, so we have it mounted the correct way. 
and then it says insert pole spring and plunger uh, in the hole in the left side of the cylinder frame just above the rear grip frame screw, rear left. And this, this one is opposite. The plunger goes in the hole first. Okay, so in that hole that we have up here on the left side of the grip frame, we're going to insert the plunger, plunger end in. Okay, so we're going to insert the plunger and the spring is going to be sticking out. Okay, so just remember to do this the right way. Install main spring assembly in the grip frame. Be certain the strut is positioned properly. See the parts drawing for correct strut positioning. I'm going to show you um, that the strut position is not like this. It goes this way. Okay. So the strut for future reference goes in this way. Um, so we're going to install that into the grip frame. And be cautious because you will probably stab yourself a couple times with the uh, with the nail. So we have it installed in the grip frame. Let me show you that how it sits on its little rest there, just like when the gun was first. Um, All right. Up. So the next part it says draw the hammer to the rear slightly and place the grip frame loosely on the cylinder frame. So we're kind of just mocking everything up. Before pushing the grip frame forward to mate with the cylinder frame, be certain that the, the cylinder latch plunger is positioned so that it will contact the bottom of the cylinder latch. Okay, And then make sure that the pulse spring is aligned to contact the left ear of the grip frame and not be bent as the ears contact. That makes sense. So I give you a figure to look at here. Now I'm going to show you this figure because I can't really explain it. That's the figure there. They're giving you an A, B, and C. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put this in the gun. We're going to set the springs up. We're going to loosely try and push everything together. This will take a few steps. Okay, so that time it looked like it went together okay. I have pressure on my on my uh, latch spring in the inside of the cylinder, which is good. Um, when you look inside the back of the hammer, you can see the lobe, cam lobe on the hammer strut. Hammer strut is positioned on here correctly. Um, the trigger, everything is lined up on both sides. And uh, so what it says here is C figure 11, note the trigger spring. And the spring must be depressed so that it slides under the rear position of the trigger when the grip is the grip frame is forward. With all with everything above aligned, fully mate the grip frame and cylinder frame and install the five grip frame screws. Note that the long screw should go on the grip frame hole on the gate side. Just put the two back ones in. Get them positioned. We're just snugging all these screws up. Those are all hand tight. And now what we can do is we can put those little the trigger legs up and pull them up and we got to try and get them installed onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the pins. Got to get them installed onto there, onto those pins. There's one on.
There's the second one. Alright guys, now that we have all five grip frame screws put back into the gun, uh, we snugged them down. I'm not going to tighten everything fully until I know that the gun is fully functional. Um, we're going to align up the main spring again. We're going to pull the hammer back all the way. And then we're going to remove the nail from underneath. Okay? So now when we release the hammer, hammer comes all the way forward. Feels good in my eyes. Trigger springs on there. Feels nice. Go ahead and put the uh, grip frame back on. that back up. Open the cylinder latch. Put the cylinder back in. gun is all finished up you guys uh, we put this in did good I actually uh, I didn't film it but I also I just took the part the gun apart again and I put the 30 ounce trigger spring in there uh, because the 40 felt good but they sent me a newer 30 ounce trigger spring in the mail as well with the shooters pack that I didn't notice and uh, so I went ahead and tried it just to see if maybe it was better than the first 30 ounce spring they gave me and it's actually working pretty nice. So we'll see how it works after a couple thousand rounds but uh, I just want to show you how nice the trigger pull is. Even with the 40 ounce it feels okay. It feels better than stock but the 30 is just... The, the difference between the 40 and the 30 ounce is a world of difference. It's insane. So let me go ahead and, and give you a... Uh, well, let me... Sh same video, but I'm going to double check the gun is not loaded. Super light. I'm bending a toothpick. I'm using a crappy little toothpick to pull the trigger with this gun. The trigger pull isn't sensational though. Just, just takes barely any. No creep. That's how I like my triggers. It's been another video from Anthony at DIY Auto Tech. Like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want. Um, I hope you subscribe. Uh, please check out some of the advertisements on my page. Give them a look, and uh, it'll help me keep my YouTube channel running. Like I said, this has been another video from Anthony at DIY Auto Tech. See you next time.